In this video, I'm going to show you how to multi-process this image in Adobe Camera Raw and then blend the two exposures together. And then we're going to cover a black and white conversion and color toning process. You can download this image for free. The link's in the description if you'd like to work along. Yes! Are you ready? It's Photoshop time and you know the drill. Smack it, whack it, and crack a lack. Yes! That's awesome! What? Okay, so just quickly, he is very underexposed. There's a high contrast between the highlights and shadows, and this is just because the photographer didn't use a bounce board or a fill flash or any of the other things to help normalize the lighting a bit when photographing outdoors. The other thing, it looks like it was shot with a rifle scope. Just generally speaking, the subjects are pretty much dead center of the scene. So we want to address that with some cropping. And then the next thing is these little bright areas are visually distracting. Remember, our eye is going to go to the brightest part of an image or the most sharply focused. So these are just distracting details that will be easily fixed. So let's get to it. I'm going to keep the background as its original. I'll hit Command or Control J to duplicate the layer. Double click on that and name it Subject. I'll hit Command or Control J again to duplicate the subject layer, but I'll rename it Background. We're on the background, so let's go ahead and work on that first. Go up to Filter, down to Camera Raw Filter. Now remember, if you have a D and G file, you can just process multiple copies. We have, we're starting with a JPEG, so we just have to pop over to Adobe Camera Raw. We know we want this to be a black and white conversion, so let's go ahead and start there with the black and white conversion button. And remember, we don't care what happens to the couple. We're only looking at the background. This is a great scene to enhance the clarity and texture since it's already a big gothic anyway, a little steampunk vibe going on. So we can really bring out the grit and texture of those co old concrete stairs. Pull up the dehaze just a little bit. Open up the shadows just a touch. Maybe vignette the background just a little. I'll toggle on the black and white mixer because I know these trees were green and yellow back there. So if I want to pull down their, str their visual strength, I can do that up here. I want to manipulate the color luminance of the staircase. I think they were reddish orange. Let's start with orange. So maybe I'll make those a little brighter, which is also going to affect the red cast and the people and their skin. Now for me, the steps are looking a touch muddy. So I maybe brighten up the exposure of those just a touch. And then once I'm done, click done, click OK. It'll auto update. So that's the background. I'm going to toggle that off. Click on the subject. Go back over to filter, camera raw filter. Now we're processing only for the couple. I'll command plus just to zoom in a touch to fill the screen. We know we want it to be a black and white conversion. So let's start there. So ultimately we need to brighten up him, but we don't want to lose her. So we've got to figure out how to how to balance that. See the detail in her shirt? If I pull those highlights all the way down, but I want to make him brighter. So what I'll do is I need to individually adjust him. And I'll do that with this adjustment brush right here. And I'll drag my exposure up. I'm going to drag it up too far just so we can see where we're painting. See that crosshair in the center? That means it's only going to affect what the crosshair touches. And remember, I said this would be a little crazy because I jacked it up to almost two stops of overexposure. So I don't need it to be that bright. I just need to be a little brighter, like there was a little fill flash, a little bounce board in there. So I'll just raise up the shadows and the exposure of his face just a touch. So I need to tap the edit tab so I can get back to the black and white mixer. And essentially, I want to pull up the reds. See how the his jacket was kind of burgundy, so I can affect the density of that, which also brighten up his facial skin tones. Same with the yellows. And that's all I'm going to do for them. I'm going to click OK. So that's the subject. That's the background. Now let's give you a, a context. This is the original. Hit Command or Control J and then hit Command Shift U. That's the generic quick desaturation method, which gives you kind of a muddy conversion, right? So that's why we're doing all the steps that we're doing to individually handle each, each side of this. Now I'm going to turn everything off, go back to the background layer, just so it has color and tone to choose from. And I'm going to choose the quick selection tool. Then up in the toolbar, I'm going to click Select Subject. And Photoshop's going to figure out what the purpose of the photograph is. It did a really good job. Miss a little spot by his nose. I'll hold down the Alt or Option key, which will let me deselect. Left bracket key to make my brush a tiny bit smaller. Command spacebar to zoom in. And then I'll just tell it to reselect the nose, reselect the tip of her nose. And overall, it's not, not doing bad, bad at all, especially considering how much color contamination is coming in from those warm steps. And if we needed it to be exact, we'd probably at this point be getting the magnetic lasso tool while we're in here. 
that's close enough for government work, and I'll show you why. We're leaving them in the background. Essentially, we just want some control over them individually. So with the Refine Edge brush already chosen, left bracket key member smaller, I'll just get and paint in the things that I see that it missed, like her eyelashes, around her hairline, right in here. Adobe Sensei AI will learn what you want as you continue to paint and repaint over the areas. And that's really all it needs to be for now. I'll hit Command and Control Zero to shrink that back down. Looks like we're missing his hand. Okay, close enough. I'm at Smart Radius, drag that up just a few pixels to tell Photoshop to look around the edge of the entire selection. I wanna smooth this selection about four because it's a very high res file, it's over 50 megs. And I'm gonna feather it just about a pixel. If you know me and you've watched my videos, you know I love to choose my output as a new layer with layer mask. Here I've already got two separate layers ready to go. I just need to mask them. So I'm just gonna leave it on selection, click okay. So now I have my selection. I'll go back up to my subject layer, turn it on, select it, add layer mask. And it's gonna automatically add this mask for me. I'll alt or option click on it so you can see it. See, there's the mask. It's not bad. Alt or option click to get back. So essentially I just need to reverse this mask and apply it to the background layer. So that means on this subject layer, as you can see on this layer, we have a black and white conversion focused on the subject. So when the mask, the white area, is showing what's on this layer, which is the black and white conversion. If it's black, that means it's hiding everything that we did on this specific layer, and it's gonna show whatever's underneath. The next thing that's visible is this color image down here. So I want to pull this mask to the background layer. I'll toggle on the background layer. I'll click on this mask and drag it up. Notice what it did. It removed the mask from where I wanted it. So I need to grab it and pull it back down. So the way to copy a mask is hold down the Alt or Option key and it will move a copy of whatever you select. I'm selecting the mask, so I'll drag that up, and that way it adds a copy. Now notice what it did. This is the, basically the darker exposure, right? So it's still showing me the dark exposure of this over top of the slide exposure. So I need to invert this mask so that it only affects the background. So I can either select the mask, go up to image adjustments and down to invert, or I can just quickly hit Command or Control I, and that will invert the layer mask. And remember, white shows what's happening on the layer. And on this layer, this is the background. So now we've merged the two exposures. And let us let me show you where we, where we would be with a flat conversion. This is a flat conversion. You see how muddy that looks now? Now that you can see what, what we've done to it to give it some drama. So I want to push all of these adjustments up to its own specific image to start working on it as its own photograph. Command Option Shift Letter E will merge all those files to the very top. That's my new original. So I'm gonna hit Command or Control J to duplicate that. And then I'm gonna clean this work area up. I'm just gonna select the subject and background by holding the Command key and selecting them. Hit Command or Control G. So now we're left or with the, the, the new original and then whatever we're gonna do for the adjustments now. For me, looking at this image, Again, it's too centered, I'd wanna crop it. So you can hit C for the crop tool or you can come select it over here. And yeah, I think a four by five ratio would be perfect for this image. I, I don't wanna to stick to the, the camera sensors aspect ratio. I want it to be my vision. I click inside to move it around, maybe grab this corner, pull it down. So now we have that nice rule of thirds thing happening. I'll hit enter. These little white spots, we've mostly cropped out. There are a couple here. So I'll go up to the very top. I'll hit the spot healing brush, which is this tool right here. And I'll just paint over what's too bright and Photoshop will auto clone them out. So now they're not visual distractions to me. Now looking at this image, again, as its own thing, command plus just to zoom in a touch, I'd like there to be more contrast in the image. So let's do that manually. I'm gonna choose the burn tool, make sure I'm on shadows and I'm gonna leave it pretty high at like 40%. And I'm gonna paint in this area, right bracket key for a bigger brush. So I essentially want this whole hat to go a bit darker. When it's closed right here behind her, I want that to be more of a graphic element. I don't care what's going on in the background. I'll multiple click because I don't need shadow detail back here. I want more of a impact, a visual impact. I believe this part of the outfit will look much better black because it was originally a jet black. So this is just reflected light uh, pulling down the tonality or brightening up the tonality. So I'm just passing over this to push it back to where it looked like on site. Same with uh, the shoes. We don't need them to be so light. Pull this down so we have some nice graphic shadow elements. Probably would just pop right back over to Adobe Camera Raw. Okay, so now here's where we ended up. Here is the generic black and white conversion. And you don't have to go the direction I just went. Figure out what you want it to look like 
for your own look? And how can you fix any problems that were captured on scene like an underexposed subject from lack of fill flash or bounce board in an outside portrait to make it your own? And I feel like this kind of over-processed, gritty look aligns nicely with the steampunk couple. Now, if you go too far, always blend back to the original retouched file. So here we didn't really do any major retouching, but here's the original file. So what I could do is, well, I'll just add a levels adjustment layer and pull up the midtones and I'll make sure that I've got all the whites there. So now I can go back to this and just lower the opacity just to get a little bit more of the softness from the layer below where it's not so gritty. And if you wanted to, to tone this, remember you could try a color LUT, the, which is right here where it says 3D LUT file, toggle it down, crisp winner, pull down the opacity, or just stay with a traditional black and white. I hope this helps. I can't wait to see what you make. Yes! Hey. What are you still doing here? It's over. Actually, all kidding aside, I hope this video helped. And if it did, consider subscribing. I like subscribers. That's awesome. What? You just took one in the jugular, man. Huh. Whoa. Yes! <laughs> God. Oh my God, I did. This is hey, you stayed to the end. You know what that means. You're awesome. I'm talking about you. Now get out of here.